It is a beautiful Saturday morning and one of those beautiful things that I want to do during this time, spring has just started, is to go spend some time at the small garden. The whole winter things have uh, like collapsed or they were on a hibernation, all the plants and all that. It's my first day going to work there this year. So follow me and uh, let's see how it can look like. Temperature should be about 18 today, one of the best uh, this year, so it's going to be really interesting. On this part, we have our green place. It looks quite disorganized, but uh, summer is just coming. So soon we'll have um, a day where everybody comes here and uh, we work together, so it should be clean. So anyway, let's go and start digging. Now and then I'll be telling you a little bit history about uh, these gardens, what we grow and uh, why these gardens are very important. So this is one of my neighbors. He has a very interesting concept. I'll just uh, try to show you guys around what type of methods he's gonna use to grow his uh, vegetables. The first thing uh, that I'm seeing is the use of uh, these uh, pellets to just have like a raised uh, garden. Here I talked to him and he's going to do a lot of, uh, he's going to have cucumber, uh, salad, uh, spinach, the idea of uh, having climbers right on the sides of this uh, structure makes it very practical because they're going to to grow and uh, rest on this on the roof also. So hopefully during summer we shall do a revisit and see how it has worked. He's got uh, stones on the walk path, which makes it so practical when he's working on his um, on his pellets and everything just seems to be at the right place So I'll show you guys that small uh, part, which was uh, very well done, and uh, this is my my neighbor. Vaheta do? Vaheta Ferro. Ferro. Aha, Ferro. Vakomodifon. 
from Turkiet. From Turkiet. Vad är det så, som är jätteviktigt med kolonilat för dig? Ja, det är viktigt för mig eh, här. Jag vill det bästa. Du vill det bästa? Ja. Mm. Därför varje år, eh, nästa två år, jag tar över 100 kilo domat. Ja. Eh, nästa 50 kilo eh, paprika. Paprika. Och gurka. Ja, oj, oj, oj. Vad mycket? Det är bara jag, jag mm. är här där, eh, i stranden och solen. Mm. Att tiden går för hälsa. Du vet, med naturen. Ja, precis. Jag tränar mm. mycket, jag gör spår mycket. Ja, ja. Hur gammal ja. är du? Jag är 62. 62, ja. Ja. och bra kondition är du? Ja. Ja, yeah. so, uh, my neighbor is 62 years and he says last year he actually got 50 kilos of uh, vegetables from there, different types. It's very, very important for him then uh, when it comes to condition, uh, his body, he feels good, the idea of the sun, it cannot be any better. To do false cover are very interested for colonial uh, locks. Debbie, a cloak. Yeah. Brother, uh, ab absolutely. Yo, son. Det blir bra som helhet man träffar och man pratar, du vet, man sitter och dricker kaffe med Ja, ja, och här jag har kaffe där vi kommer att dricka lite sen. Ja, ja. ja. <laughs> Then another beautiful thing is the idea of uh, people meeting, taking a cup of tea, just having a conversation. So he's very very positive about it. Vad ska du odla där förresten? Jag ska odla här bara paprika. Ja. Gurka och ja. tomat. Tre, tre saker. Men du har lite... Ja, och bänor. Ja, du, bänor. bänor. Men du har också frukt. Det är lite bit chaos because of the rain. Look at that. Kenyan tea and you to just uh, go through this type of uh, gardening I think in England they do call it uh, allotment gardens it should be the same with the US or maybe a little bit different when it comes to Kenya I think I will relate it to you know like the, the schemes where the government has gotten people to work on this uh, big scheme, this Moya scheme, there's uh, something in uh, Kilifi, I don't remember the name. Now those schemes, the people who go to work in those schemes, they, they're usually given small portions of uh, farms to do to plant the vegetables and that type of things which actually relate to this but this is a very also um, something to do with the urban gardening which starts with the industrialization in Europe uh, basically in uh, Germany where people uh, migrated from the countryside into the city and they when they came to the city they needed a place where they they were able to grow some bit of vegetables you remember most of them have just come from the country so they needed a place where they, they would actually work with their hands which they used to and so this led to the formation of the allotment gardens in sweden they're called colony lots i remember when i was a kid um there's this guy who came from the from the US and my perception of uh, Europe and uh, the US was like um, you know 
everything is uh, there's just honey and bread but uh, now when you come to Europe and you start now living life like the other people you realize that it takes a lot of uh, there's, there's so much that you have to do, usually I spend time here. This garden is actually uh, owned by my, my commune, my, where I work. I work as a mental uh, nurse, which means that we get our patients to come here, relax and just uh, maybe drink coffee, have a social life and all that. So it's very, very important for us. But at the same time, so as, as, a, as an employee, I do come and try to, like just now, I'm working this weekend and the weather is good, so I also get a time to just come and work here and reflect about everything and all that. So it's a very, very important thing. There are also families around. You can see most of the people. It's just not for the old. It's very mixed feeling. I think it's the, you have to be a little bit special to be interested in this type of gardening. And you can see most of the people, they, they sort of have interest in uh, planting uh, vegetables, uh, flowers, social life, and uh, quite a lot of things. I do hope that you got some bit of motivation and I wish to leave you finally with this beautiful shot from the allotment garden or colony lot as we call it in Sweden. Please do leave us a like, support the channel and until next time, good luck with your garden.